For what purpose does the gentleman from Pennsylvania rise? Madam Speaker, to nominate the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Donalds. The gentleman is recognized. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, no matter what side of the aisle you're on, no matter what your political persuasion, one thing is universally recognized across this country. Washington is broken. Washington is completely broken. Whether it's a wide open border, millions of people streaming across, terrorists, criminals, fentanyl coming right to your community, not at the border, but into your community. Overdoses happening in your towns, funerals happening in your town because the border's open, because this place is broken. Twelve days ago, in the middle of the night, 4,000 pages showed up over here, set six and a half or 2.7 trillion, 1.7, sorry, 1.7 trillion dollars in spending, 7,200 7, earmarks, 24 hours time to read it, like a Christmas tree right before Christmas that nobody outside of this town wanted. If you've been here for one year, you voted on that once. If you've been here for three years, you voted on the same thing three times. If you've been here for 10 years, you voted on it 10 times. Washington is broken. We got crime running across the streets, no matter what community you're in, because now this town has decided that somehow the criminals aren't understood, and we've abandoned the victims. This is what people in our country are dealing with. We are funding wars in other countries while we're destroying our own military because this town is broken. We have an administration that has contempt for the American people and is using these big corporations to spy on Americans. And using the instruments of federal power to persecute and prosecute them because this town is broken. And this place is literally broken. There hasn't been an amendment on the floor for six years in this town. So if you're not on the committee of jurisdiction, but it affects your citizens, well, too bad for you. You just vote yes or you just vote no. That's not how this place was designed to be. We vote on bills that have all kinds of things that have nothing to do with the bill itself. Everybody came here because they said to their constituents, this town is broken and I want to fix it. Well, how are you going to fix it if you come to this town and just step right in line? and keep doing the same things that everybody has done before you. It's not going to fix it, and the American people know it. And I would say this. I think the person that has done the most, that has done the most to make this fabulous, this wonderful Republican majority, is Speaker Pelosi and her policies. That's what has achieved this majority over here, because the American people are sick and tired of it, and they've had enough of it. Now, this is not about, this is not about personalities. It's not about personalities. It's about the policies that come out of here. This is not about personalities on this side of the aisle or that side of the aisle. We believe, and we want to believe. We believe, and we want to believe that every person that comes here, left, right, center, has the best intentions for our country. The best intentions for our country. And it's not about the personalities in this contest. It is not personal for us. But because we all acknowledge and we all know that Washington is broken, we must take a new path. There must be a new vision so that Congress works for the American people. Because the American people are watching what's happening here, and they've watched what's happened here, and they're sure in their hearts, and they can prove it, that this town works for this town. That's who this town is working for. Ladies and gentlemen, we are making history today.
We are making history in this process. And we are showing the American people that this process works. Yeah, it's been about 100 years. It's been about 100 years since this has happened before. But we have said we are not going to take any more of Washington being broken. We're going to do something for the American people, and we're going to fix it. And is it going to be painful? And is it going to be difficult? Yeah, it probably is. That's why it took 100 years. It probably is. But we're going to do it. And we can also make history today by making the first. Will the House be in order? By electing the first black Republican Speaker of the House. Yes, thank you. Now, as my colleagues probably know, the first black members of Congress to serve in this body were Republicans. Were Republicans. As a matter of fact, you probably also know that Frederick Douglass, who went and worked with Abraham Lincoln to emancipate the people of color in this country, said he would never be anything but a Republican. Would never be anything but a Republican. I am here to nominate Byron Donalds because he has accomplished many things. He is a man of faith. He is a family man. He is a businessman, and he is a man of community service. He's come from the school of hard knocks. Because not all outcomes in life are equal, but America is the place where we can each do great things regardless of our humble beginnings, each one of us. Now, Byron is a product of single family where it's not easy. It's not easy. But he has succeeded in America, and that's a testament to what we have created here and what we're trying to save. He's got a record of accomplishing things. He has a record of being on the right side. He is respected. He is trusted. He is capable, and he achieves results. Now, Byron has a big mind, and he's big in stature as well. He's very nice, but I will tell you this, in a negotiation, in a negotiation with Chuck Schumer, I should sure want to be on the other side of Byron Donalds. He knows who he is, he knows what his foundation is, and he knows that Washington is broken, and what Chuck Schumer sends over here isn't going to work out for the American people. Ladies and gentlemen, Washington is broken. Byron Donalds will inspire us and restore our citizens' faith that this institution actually works for them. And it is my highest honor to nominate the gentleman from Florida, Byron Donalds, to be the next Speaker of the House, and I yield.